On that note of happy springtime, I want to yes. um, welcome you guys. And your order, I'll have it start with you. Sure. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Yorado Abrahamian. I'm chair of Gen North America. Um, welcome to EGAPS 4, day two, the open space meeting. If you're, if this is your second day of the conference, welcome back. We hope you're um, ready to get working on how we uh, define our new future as a guideline and systematic review community. And if it's your first day joining, welcome. Um, we hope uh, you leave here feeling fulfilled and energized for the work that's ahead of us. Um, uh, Gen North America has partnered with the New York Academy of Medicine um, on this conference venture. And I'd like to welcome um, Peter Weyer to say a few words of welcome too before we hand it over to Mary Nix to do a formal introduction today. Um, okay, thank you, your auto. Uh, and uh, my, my name is spelled W-Y-E-R <laughs> I, I, in the subtitle here. Well, I'm as curious as everybody else to see how this will work. Hopefully uh, this will be the payoff of the whole effort and uh, I, I hope people find it to be uh, engaging and uh, and helpful well, actually peter thanks for mentioning that i think it's a good time to remind people that this is our first open space meeting in the virtual setting so please bear with us and our facilitation team as we work out any uh, potential kinks in the system so thanks for accommodating us so mary would you like to take over? Yeah, great. Well, Yurado and Peter, between the two of you, you've covered everything I wanted to cover uh, <laughs> in the welcome, but I will just add to it, how's that? Um, and so with, with that, welcome everyone to EGAPS for Open Space, the Guideline International Network North America, New York Academy of Medicine section on evidence-based healthcare, jointly sponsored opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer learning and sharing. This is our third open space event. The first one was a half day session during EGAPS 3. It, end, it, it came at the end of EGAPS 3, second day. Um, and, uh, but like today, um, we began to think about what we would be doing in that half day uh, early on and uh, beginning the morning of day one, where we had everyone fill out little sticky notes um, that we then organized into themes. That day, that half day pilot served as a proof of concept uh, that this event format was effective in promoting engagement of various stakeholders groups around the common themes. Through that event, we lived up to the full name of EGAPS, which stands for Evidence-Based Guidelines Affecting Practice, Policy, and Stakeholders. The second open space event was a full day GIN North America event held in March, 2019. It served as a foray into exploring the possibilities of using this format more regularly, more consistently. And the results of that event confirmed interest in continued collaboration this way. Although we tried to have a third open space a year ago, as you know, COVID-19 intervened. And now here we are, our fourth opportunity to connect, <clears throat> or our third, sorry, opportunity to connect. We wished it was the fourth. <laughs> but with this, we are excited. We're excited to be reconnected. And in this way, we're hopeful. We're hopeful body. today we are setting ourselves up for collective improvement. No, I've got a minute. And we're eager. Day. We are eager to get busy together. And we are definitely stimulated by the speakers of yesterday, right? If you were able to be there yesterday, at some point in time, someone on those panels or the keynote said something that has got to have inspired you um, to want to do better, to do more, um, to be involved, to collaborate, to uh, contribute to the collective improvement. Um, specifically, our keynote speaker, Mr. Dowling from Northwell Health, 
pose questions that I encourage you to keep in mind today. Some of those questions were, went like this, and I may not have gotten them exactly as he phrased them, so bear with me. How do we build and enhance a disaster infrastructure? Hmm. How do we maintain, Christy and team, you'll like this, how do we maintain a culture of creativity and innovation that blossomed in COVID? How do we manage the changing nature of our work, remote work, telehealth, and so on? How do you, how do we become customer obsessed? Who's our customer? At Northwell Health, the customer are patients and families, the ultimate of where, to whom care is delivered. How do we respond to inequities that were exposed during COVID? Inequities in healthcare delivery and in healthcare systems. And how do we redesign healthcare delivery? What is health? How do we define what health is? And what is quality? And who decides what quality is? These were all very thought provoking questions and he had sub questions within his questions. Um, the, the list seemed endless, uh, but all really great questions. And while these questions may seem bigger than what we do in evidence-based clinical practice guideline ecosystem, you cannot deny that we could make important contributions to answering those questions. So how do we fit into a disaster infrastructure? There are different types of disasters of the natural and man-made types. Can we find our place? Can we accelerate evidence? Can we accelerate guidance to those who need it? Can we put it in the language of those who are using it? Can we digitize it? Do we have a culture of creativity and innovation in our work? If we do, how are we sharing our evidence, our guideline, our customer involvement innovations with others so that we can reduce waste and improve efficiency and replication at a larger scale? <clears throat> These questions just seem endless and yet together we can tackle them. That's what we're gonna try today. We're thrilled you are here with us. And again, welcome to EGAP's open space. Thank you. Right. Well, welcome. Welcome, you guys. Um, I will introduce myself. My name is Christy Zuber, and um, I have three colleagues with me. Um, and I'll just have you guys just say a quick hello. So, um, Cynthia, want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. And Brittany. Hi, welcome. Excited to be here with you all today. And Tim. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Tim Ross from Richmond, Virginia. Great to be here. Thanks, guys. And so you'll probably notice all of us have the word facilitator put in front of our name. So that should make us a little bit easier to, to see and to hunt down. And um, we are at we are here together today. Um, really excited to host this for you all. Um, we're a part of Aspen Labs, which is a human centered design and innovation consulting practice. And so we're happy to be bringing in some different creative tools and, and approaches into um, the work that you guys are doing. And I, I was mentioning earlier, I participated in some of the sessions yesterday and fascinating conversations and really exciting. And I wanna say the fact that you all are here today means that you are fun, creative and bold individuals because if you weren't, you wouldn't show up for something like this. So okay. I am thrilled to be here and to be with you guys today. Um, so to kind of start and give us a sense of how the day is going to go along, um, we have a few different things um, queued up for you all. Um, so first is we're going to, um, um, for some reason, my slides, let me stop sharing. My slides are kind of frozen for a minute. Um, we're gonna kind of go through a little bit of the, the agenda for the day. And so you got a sense of how it is that the today is going to be looking. So let me know, is it on presenter view or full view? How are we looking? Good view? Looking good. Okay, great. Um, they are frozen. So Tim, I'm gonna have you go ahead and share. So the agenda okay. for today, talk a little bit about open space in general. So open space is really the kind of things, and you guys might have watched some of this um, on the video that I shared. So open space is really what happens when you're at that 
coffee kind of conversation. So open space is what happens really at those in-between times. Um, I don't, and I mentioned this on the video, if you guys are like me, when you show up to a conference, often what you really love is that conversation that happens, that mingling that actually happens in between. And so that's what's really going on here today is that mingling in between is what we're going to be looking for. So you're going to create the topics for conversation. Um, you're going to be attending these sessions together and you're going to be capturing your own notes and really kind of taking these own takeaways. So it will be as great as you actually bring into it. So if we go into the next slide, this is just a little bit about, you know, what is, how does this work? What is, what is open space? What does it look like? So if we're able to play the video, some of you guys might have been here for 2019, um, which was when we did an in-person um, open space event. So here you can see kind of in the background, the, the marketplace that was there, what it looked like, people were mingling around and having a great time. And as we did this, you know, there's a lot of energy that gets created in the room and it becomes a little bit, we had to adjust and make it a little bit different as we're working in a virtual world, but it doesn't make it impossible. And so what you guys are going to see today is that we're going to be using various kinds of tools to demonstrate what a marketplace feels like, how we can go forward and, um, and capturing our ideas and having breakout rooms to share our discussions. So we'll be heavily leveraging off of different documents. We'll be heavily leveraging off of shared ways of capturing things and, um, and breakout rooms in Zoom. So you guys will get a chance to kind of experience some of that today. So if we go on to the next slide and look at kind of the agenda, it's gonna be a really tight one. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is hear a little bit from, um, from Sandy. And so we'll get to hear a little bit about what she's thinking and to get our juices going. I would encourage you guys highly to use chat. And I think chat is great to use to, you know, what are you thinking? What notes came up? It doesn't just have to be a big profound statement. So if you hear something that's interesting, type it into chat. You know, we'll be modeling that for you. It's a great way to have a dialogue with a lot of people at the same time. We'll then open back up the marketplace. We have some ideas that are already out there. We'll be getting more ideas from you all. So be thinking about what do you want to actually be talking about with each other? Um, so we'll have some time to do that. We'll do two rounds of conversations today. Each one is an hour long. Um, and then after that, we'll have a really brief break or a time to wrap up your conversations. We'll do a reflection exercise all in a shared document together. And then we're gonna wrap up and do closing remarks. So that will be the session today. It's gonna to be pretty fast and furious, um, but we're excited to give you all space to have the kinds of conversations that you want to have. Um, so I'm gonna hand it off, Brittany, for you to be able to share slides and to be able to give an introduction to Sandy. So we'll switch over to that for our igniter. All right, so Mary. Great, Mara. Sandy, welcome. Um, let me, give me just one second. And uh, Mary or Urado, do you guys wanna give a quick intro? Yes, that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? As I've noted before, wait, yeah. As, I, um, as I've noted, Sandy may not need an introduction, but to help set our burning platform for today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our igniter, Sandy Lewis. Many of you know her. Uh, for those who do not, Sandy has the chops in evidence-based practice in the nonprofit and for-profit sectors. She's been a leader of a guideline development program for a major medical specialty society, growing that program into a national example of rigor and pragmatism She's been an invited faculty at a number of Institute of Medicine panels. She has been a prior GIN North America chair. She was a chief guidelines officer at Dr. Evidence, and she's now a consultant in the field. Sandy is a master of the sciences in our arena. She's a champion of the digital future and a leader in collaboration and engagement. Please welcome Sandy. Thank you, Mary. That, that is a, a really lovely intro. You sound like you're competing with my mother. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Urado. And thank you, Gin North America and the New York Academy of Medicine. My only conflicts of interest 
are that I am president of EBQ Consulting, a guideline consulting and systematic review organization. And I participate pro bono in many of the initiatives that you learned about yesterday and that we will continue to discuss. So I am thrilled to join all of you today here in 2021. Given the year that we just had, this is virtually, pun intended, the start of the new decade. So let's take this opportunity to go on a bit of historical time travel together. Let's start by traveling back a couple of decades to the turn of the millennium. Two decades ago, we were just coming out of the era of gobsack guidelines, good old boys sitting around a table. Believe it or not, back then, both phar pharma both funded the guidelines and wanted to review them before publication. I am so glad to report that we put an end to all of that pronto. During that first decade of the new millennium, we created conflict of interest policies, standardized protocols, and better methods, thus initiating the science of guideline development. And this fed into the next major advance. One decade ago, in 2010, we worked to establish standards, the IOM standards for clinical practice guidelines and systematic reviews. They were landmark when they were published the following year in 2011. Then Jin and others followed suit. Finally, we had benchmarks to which we aspired and we were never going to go back to the old ways. We were creating trustworthy guidelines. Now we could really let our passions flow. We could see that we could improve patient care and patient outcomes. Wow, that's what our hard work is really all about, patient care and patient outcomes. The last five of the years that I was at Dr. Evidence, I taught a 10 session course on evidence-based medicine that we called the guidelines career track. I used to end each session, each topic, with a slide that addressed how this topic related to our work at Dr. Evidence. Then I would always remind the group that out of the entire guideline process, the work they did as individuals working in teams was critically important because patient care and patient outcomes were at stake. We have to get this right. They loved it because this helped them understand the value of their individual work within their teams. Even on days when their work might've been fairly monotonous, they were incentivized. And I like to believe it helped to incentivize everyone. And that is true for you too. In your individual work, within your teams, keep the big prize in mind, patient care and patient outcomes. Now, returning in our time travel to today in 2021. Research is improving and the evidence base is evolving, which allows us to do a better job summarizing the evidence quantitatively. We're going beyond meta-analyses and now often conducting network meta-analyses. And living guidelines are real today. Yes, we face some challenges hitting the accelerator, but we now have many examples of organizations that have accomplished this task and they are keeping their guidelines living. We can do this. We can scale this. Soon we'll be able to use these powerful quantitative methods to process real world data and evidence into living guidelines and enter the world of precision medicine. Today, we can make population level recommendations about various available options, but soon when patients ask, yes, doctor, but how does that apply to me? We can help by identifying trends in benefits and harms for subsets of patients just like them sharing common constellations of comorbidities, genetic profiles, or risk factors, precision medicine. Also today, we're on the precipice of computable guidelines. Real guideline implementation was never more possible. We're creating digital repositories of recommendations that can be easily searched based on PICO elements, 
Eventually, guidelines will be computable, making them findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, and certainly more usable. Today's electronic medical records and personal health records are becoming more interoperable, employing standards like HL7 and FHIR. And digital devices are continually generating real world data, all feeding into repositories of big data, just waiting to be mined. So what will the year 2030 look like? In 2030, we will have learning health systems where real world data will feed back into the evidence ecosystem cycle and be used by systematic reviewers and guideline developers to update and keep their reviews and guidelines living. Real world data synthesized into real world evidence will help answer questions only big data can address. We will get better at mining that big data and identifying patterns and trends that will help to make precision medicine a reality. Guideline recommendations will auto-populate into electronic medical records and personal health record screens triggered simply by the presence of key terms or concepts. So as you add diagnoses or prescribe new drugs or other interventions, the software will identify that there are relevant guideline recommendations with clinical decision support tools addressing those very items. The RECs will automatically appear in the medical record along with any contraindications, alerts, or other warnings that apply. It might even note contradictions to the patient's own pre-recorded preferences. Isn't that cool? So these exciting ideas are really not too futuristic. They are now in planning for development pilots as we speak. Many of our colleagues who spoke yesterday have shared these concepts and how we are all working to make them a reality now and over these next few years. So today, at this conference, we have to translate all these big picture ideas into actionable steps that we, as guideline developers and evidence synthesizers, need to start doing now this year, even today. How can we get from where we are now to where we want to be next, and then after that, and then on to 2030? We are here today to try to solve some of these issues, or at least to move towards solving some of them. We need to start with these visions, but then we need to be practical and explore how will we get there? What changes shall we make? Can we develop best practices? How will we implement our set of best practices into our workflows? Do they fit into a new paradigm? Shall we develop new structures or frameworks? Which of the many best practices that we learned today will be realistic, reasonable, achievable in the near future? How will we prioritize our best practices so that we work on the most urgent and important ones first. Can we measure our progress? And as with any process, when and how can we be pragmatic about meeting our goals while balancing our challenges? And there are certainly plenty of those. Let's be part of the conversation today. Let's use this open space conference today to make a difference in the work, in our work, as evidence reviewers and guideline developers. In guideline development and evidence reviews, we work as a team with oversight committees, with panels, with our methods colleagues and others. But today, I am asking you to do something as an individual I want you to participate in the open space discussions, ask questions, suggest solutions, share ideas, and learn. Be part of the conversation. <laughs> then I want you to take those future visions and ideas back to your teams and your organization 
and see how you can implement those ideas and make them a reality. It will help you and your colleagues to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. That was great. Thank you. All right, well, fantastic. Well, hopefully you guys are kind of thinking a little bit about possibilities and what you'd like to talk about. Um, so I'm going to shift into gear with um, beginning to kind of introduce how we do open space, what that's going to look and feel like, um, and kind of get into that place. Tim, I'll have you share the slides as I'm kind of starting to start to queue that up. So as you guys are thinking, start kind of, you know, noodling in your head, writing notes down for yourself. What is it that's interesting? What topics might you want to have conversations about that you haven't queued up yet? You know, what's what's standing out in your head in these in these areas? So as we get into this place, we want to talk a little bit about, you know, what does um, open space mean? What kinds of conversations do you want to have now? What's a challenge or topic that you really want to explore? So um, we're gonna jump, Tim, I think we're gonna go ahead and skip past the warm up from a time standpoint and we're gonna get into open space principles. So if we talk a little bit about open space principles and you know what, what is that? What does that start to actually look and feel like? So open space is really one of these kinds of things where we want to be able to bring in our own dialogue. It's really about the people themselves of who, the, who comes to your conversations are the right people. Whatever happens is really the only thing that can happen. And as we're doing this, you know, we think a little bit about um, if, if, I have, if I'm having a conversation, there's only one person here, is that okay? What if, you know, it's 15 people, there's no judgment on who it is, how many people are there. Um, it's, it's open to whoever ends up showing up are the right folks. And then finally, when it's over, it's over. Um, which means we're going to give you all a chance to be able to, to go to a conversation, to have some dialogue about it. But what we want is, you know, we'll wrap it up in the hour. If you want to continue talking about it, you can continue talking about it. If you want to, you know, take things offline, you can take things offline. This is really about how you want to do it today. So let's talk about the law of two feet or what we like to call in this new world, the law of two fingers. So what the law of uh, two feet would mean if we were in person is the law of two feet is you can walk from place to place. So where you want to have a conversation is where you need to be. Now, for most of us, when we attend a conference, we often say, well, I'm in this room. I can't leave this room. I shouldn't leave this room. That's not how this actually works. So the way that this actually works is unless you're hosting a conversation, then whenever it's time and you say, you know, I'd like to go see what's happening in another room. You pick up and you leave and you go see what's happening in the other room. And that's perfectly fine. Um, so we want you all to feel free to do that. Um, so floating around is actually part of it. That's part of the great thing that you can do at Open Space. So we encourage you to do that unless you're hosting a conversation. Um, so when we continue to move on, as we're thinking about how to do this, so we'll flip to the next slide. Um, the conversation, what's the conversation that you want to have now? What do you want to explore? So in the chat, I'm gonna have us put up what the um, open space grid is, the open space marketplace. And so I want you to make sure that you guys can open it up. We can be able to kind of contribute topics to it. So take a look as we're getting that put into the chat box. Let's take a look at the chat box um, as that starts to come up and we'll start to think about what is it that we wanna be talking about? What is it that we want? What conversations might we want to have? What do we wanna to discover together? Um, what new opportunities actually might exist together? All right, so I'm gonna have, Tim, if you don't mind sharing the open space grid. And sorry, you guys, Zoom is really slow today. So we're having a lot of really sort of strange challenges on Zoom today for some reason, but we'll keep, we'll keep working through it. There's a lot of us that want to have conversations today on Zoom, probably. Um, so click the link in the chat box. Yeah, and we know that there are great, we have no idea why. So it's a some sort of loading issue on Zoom right now. Um, but if you go to that open space grid, 
So make sure that you guys can, can see that. If you're having a hard time, let us know. So can everyone see that link in the chat box? Click that link if you haven't already. It's the same one we posted earlier today. She looks like about, about 53 people are in the, the spreadsheet in the marketplace right now. Oh, great. Okay. All right, great. So take a look at that. So these are some of the topics that we have already as you guys are kind of loading in. These are some of the topics that we have already. And if you can't um, open it up, that's okay. You can, you know, you can look at the screen. We'll just, we'll make sure we've got it covered in both areas. But these are the topics that we have right now. So what I wanna ask you guys to do is this is your time to think about what do you wanna talk about that you might not already see. So you can see we have about four topics for round one already in there. And we have about four topics for round two. So what I want you guys to do is take advantage of the chat box. What other topics might you want to talk about? What other things are coming up for you? Whether it's from the igniter, whether it's from your conversations yesterday, remember this is the conversations that you have today is what you bring to it. We're not coming in with an existing agenda. These are topics that are coming from you all. So what topics might be coming up for you guys? And Tim, I might have you play some music um, lightly in the background as people are kind of thinking about what they might wanna talk about. So what is it that's stirring in your mind? Yes, and definitely topics that are different than the ones that are already in there. So I know you guys are getting a chance to kind of look at it, see what other things are coming up for you. So the only rule is that as you start thinking about what it is that you want to talk about, if you contribute a topic, you just want to make sure that you stay in the room where that topic is. But that's the only rule about that. So be bold, be creative. You know, it doesn't have to sound like a typical conference topic. If there's something that you think is this kind of random different topic, you know, that's fine. So if you're um, if you're looking at the screen, um, uh, so you can you can actually click on the link and visit the, the spreadsheet yourself and zoom in and out. Um, I've got sort of a zoomed out so you can see sort of the all of all of the session topics. I can zoom in a little bit here though if that's helpful. Um, I may need to zoom out to add others, but at least for now we can. All right, so we're seeing some things start to come through here. And so Mary and Gerardo, I'll have you guys kind of monitor what's coming through in chat. And you give us a heads up of the topics that we should include in the marketplace, because there might be some that are kind of similar. And so we'll have you guys queue us up which things you want us to include. So we'll keep working this in the background for all of you participants. Keep thinking about what you might want to contribute, see what people are putting in the chat, add to it. So continue to use chat. What is it that you're looking for? What are you seeing that's coming up that's interesting? What other ideas might come up? Uh, Christy, would you like us to speak about them or yep. do you want us to chat? With okay. Yep. So I'm seeing the uh, one from Doris. I think um, that's already being addressed perhaps. And we can always add, I think that's room two in the first round. We can okay. always add the topic um, in round two as well. Oh, um, This is Janice. I was thinking that the comment that Tiffany made could be in the first round on in the third session with uh, how inclusion of patient voice, and but it might not only be limited. Sure, I think we can. I think it would be us to have. Uh, patient voice one in round two as well. I think there's so much to unravel there that it might be limiting to just keep it in one session. So Janice, Tiffany, Doris, feel free to add that as a topic in the second round. 
Uh -huh. <laughs> so we'll type it in. Yeah. Yeah, we'll type it in for you guys. It's Mary. Thanks, Jerry, for uh, replying to my question to you in the chat. And Jill Hubbard, I hope that that um, helps you to know maybe what session might be relevant to your topic of interest. So I don't think that we need to add something, but I know Jerry um, in leading um, that topic uh, related to the collaborative, uh, we'll make sure that that's addressed, right, Jerry? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's yes. okay if the participants unmute to clarify things. Sure, sure. Okay, because it's so hard to type in chat. So um, <laughs> I see they're saying patient voice, and I just want to make sure that patient voice also means the general consumer, because those are two different perspectives. And then I think someone was saying Doris. I don't know if they meant me as Doris or is there another Doris because our names are so close. So if you were doing D-O-R-I-C-E, that's me, Doris. And you were saying something was already covered? Um, I read something that Brittany had put in from a Doris, D-O-R-I-S. So okay, um, a Doris. real Doris. Thank you, yeah. nope. <laughs> that's Doris. <Yes. laughs> Thank you. So Doris, if that distinction is um, very valid. And if you feel that we should address it separately in two sessions, please feel what? free to ask for that. The consumer no, no, voice versus the patient voice. One, one session is good. good. It's just I didn't want to um, add to something if they wanted to focus on patients only. Okay. Thank you. This is Tim here. Um, so real quick, um, would you mind doing a, a quick recap of what we've already decided for the um, the inclusion on the marketplace, the session? Um, I, I'm going down the list. There are so many suggestions. One second. This is great. Yeah, if we were in a room, this is where post-it notes would be flying. So now we've yeah. got yeah. So it's just a different version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Maria Michaels. This is Mary. Um, I, I hear I hear you. Um, I think it, um, uh, Jerry Session, the COVID collaborative, would also speak to Tiffany's comment about U.S. versus global. Um, in that collaborative, there are international stakeholders as well, and I know uh, Jerry's been working with them, like those with COVID end and even Cochrane, um, to, to 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 get them all integrated. Um, so I think that. Uh, Jerry's topic may cover a good bit of some of these items. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have a question for Maria and maybe for Brian, uh, maybe more for Brian Alper uh, than for Maria, given her comment in the chat about the COVID collaborative and maybe some um, synergies between what Brian was going to talk about and what Jerry's going to talk about. Um, Brian, were you going to focus on something more specific than the work of the collaborative? I'm presuming so. Um, right. Well, the, but, the concept in the um, original topic I proposed about making it computable was very focused on the technology, the tools, the tool requirements. If you want to get into the, the deep technical detail, how do we make it happen? And then the collaborative um, is very wide ranging, many collaborative groups working in potential um, across many different projects and, and how to collaboratively you know, work together. So if there's a um, small group that wants to get very deep into the technology, that's a, you know, an open space for that. And if it's um, kind of a larger, you know, how to share in a networking and collaborative way across many of the, the goals that may be, um, you know, the, the one that Jerry posted. But these projects are very um, related to each other. So I think of it as the, the, the technical layer or the human layer in, in a sense. Um, but often at uh, gin meetings, there, there's been a gin tech group that has gotten focused on the technology specifically. And if, if there was that interest in this group, um, I'd be happy to zoom in specifically. And if not, you know, people can walk with their two fingers. Sure. Good point. Yep. Good point, Brian. 
Great. So Tim, any clarification on what to what to put in as a topic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, I, think we're I was just going to say it, it would be so. This is our first time doing this virtual, virtually. Would be super helpful, uh, so Mary and Dorado. If you say, um, Tim, let's add the, you know the the topic name to which round we should put it in, and then say as suggested by you know uh, Jerry or Doris or whatever, and I'll just go copy and paste theirs in. But I, but the musing, the, the conversation is great that you guys are having. That's that would that's what would happen in person. It would just be a little bit easier physically in the in the room with each other. So if you cue right. me up, I will go and add that. So I think we're I think we're trying to get to that, Tim. So we're just yeah, having yeah, the sure. yeah. So yeah. I want to so if there is a need, as Brian said, we can add a second session to round two, so people could have the chance to go to that. Not sure, Brian, who should we add? I think Brian, you're hosting another session though in round two. Yeah, I, I had listed mine twice. Not yeah. sure how this works. No, no, no I, think that's, I think there. that's great. I can do it in just one session. No, no, I think it's great to give people the option in case they want to go to other rooms in round one. Um, I want to look at the one from Jessica Lam as well. Yeah. Trial mm -hmm. recruitment, inclusivity, diversity. Um, so I think if we do one from Jessica, we'll need to make that round one because she's already hosting in round two. Um, hmm. I think she had just put her name as that she's interested in joining. All right. Brian. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. a sign up sheet. So I, I just signed up and I didn't realize oh, yeah, that was yeah. for the host. <laughs> You're officially deleted off of it. So, <laughs> yeah. so Jessica, do you want to host a discussion on the topic you suggested in round two so that you can attend the session you want to in round one? Oh, I didn't realize I was signing up to host something. I was just something that I thought. No, should... you can, or maybe we could see if there's, are, are there's interested in that topic? Should we add that as a list? So in the in-person setting, this would be a discussion. And as a group, we yeah. could decide that there isn't enough interest in a topic and we're not going to put it on the board. Right, Christy? Mm -hmm. This yep. is how I mean, we would it, remove yeah, it might be 10 more minutes to finish out our marketplace. It might be something okay. that can get rolled into that um, question about capturing the patient voice. I just feel like, you know, the okay. populations are maybe not completely well represented in just the evidence that we see being generated. So. so if we don't generate enough interest for a whole room on that, Jessica, so perhaps you can make sure to at least step in into that room a bit to add that comment. So engage sure. that discussion. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you're not committed to staying in a room, as Christy said, the entire time. So, yeah. Um, let's see, Tim. I think we're going to add one. Okay, I'm ready. I fingers ready. Let's see. That's I'm trying to make sure we don't miss anything. You see Marlene's uh, Urado? No. Marlene. I'm scrolling, one, scrolling, one scrolling. At 140. If that helps. Let's see. I'm almost there. Three, three topics in yeah. there. Yeah. The about Mary. Guidelines seems Where's that? really, really right up the alley. <laughs> yes. Um, Marlene, are you okay hosting a session on that in round one? I know you might leave early in round two. Um, Please feel free to unmute yourself or. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would do workforce uh, preparedness. Mm -hmm. I think that's important as we plan for the future, what we've yeah. learned from this. Okay. So Tim, let's add that okay. in round one. And for those that haven't done an open space before, before. Facilitating, facilitating an open space is really just asking questions and encouraging conversation. It doesn't, right. um, it doesn't require a, t a ton of heavy lifting. Mm-mm. You don't have to be the expert. Just no, interested you party. Right. Throw out the main ideas. Yeah. And then the conversation will naturally happen. Um, so Brian and Jerry, do we want to add a second one to round two? There. Many of the topics being raised. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I think we're fine. I think we're good then. Unless we're missing something. What Caroline, Caroline Wang had something too. Did you see hers at 142? Um, again, it, it, yeah. Let them 
I'm looking at Karen's now because someone said I second Karen's suggestion. Who, Karen? Karen, if you want to unmute yourself and share, it might be easier oh, than yeah. us scrolling through chat. I think anyone can unmute themselves and participate in this conversation. Um, no, but yeah, while they're doing that, can you scroll back up to uh, Caroline Way yes, at 142, Karen and... Your Honor? Hi, Karen. Hi. Um, we've been using ECRI, and I was just wondering if other organizations were using some other body to do the appraisal since the National Guideline Clearinghouse is no longer. And if so, who that would be, and if they're posting them somewhere other than their own websites. Mm -hmm. Yes, Karen, I think we can roll this in. If I think someone had, um, Chris, I think, had suggested having a discussion about um, do we need to revisit the IOM standards? I think this could be rolled into mm -hmm. that if there's interest in this topic. Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, just a reminder too, uh, yesterday we learned about the Cochrane, uh, the Cochrane uh, recommendation mapping where that group is actually doing uh, the agree appraisal of guidelines, COVID related recommendations, um, where they're um, looking at specific domains of the agree instrument um, to help uh, the users who are finding these recommendations understand um, how they score in these domain areas um, to inform their judgment about um, is this something we should use or not. So again, that thinking about what we heard yesterday, if you were able to join, that that was one of the resources uh, that was provided as a way to help us understand the quality or how recommendations around COVID have been appraised or are being appraised because this is still real time. Yeah, so that would be something good to add I think to to your discussion, and is Chris going to host that? Did you say Chris and Karen? Do you, would you like to co-host a session in round two? Uh, this is Chris. Sure, I will. Okay. Um, Tim, I'll capture this for you in the text. Okay, thank you. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, and Yorado, I just had one more comment too, just about how we, and this is sort of mentioned in the vaccine rollout strategies description, but how we really integrate real world evidence and even really defining what that means and how we appraise real world evidence. I think like that's something that's, you know, it's very big right now, but um, we're still kind of behind in how we look at that evidence because we kind of usually just lump all observational data into this sort of lower quality bucket, but um, that seems to be a, a direction that a lot of evidence is going is toward these kind of more broader um, registries and things like that. So how we look at that evidence. Absolutely. I think that could be addressed in this session that we're adding, Jessica. Okay. So Chris and Karen, um, in case Jessica doesn't make it to this room, Perhaps you can, at one of the topics you discuss in this new session in round two would be real world evidence. <laughs> Good topics. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Silo breaking, great. <laughs> I like that, that's the topic. Silo breaking, Jerry. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is Maria, I guess um, I was just trying to figure out which, and thanks Jerry for the, the chat message there. I was just trying to figure out what would make the most sense for um, part of what I was thinking might be helpful to discuss, which is uh, as I put in the chat, somewhere between what Brian suggested and what Jerry suggested. Um, so without like trying to split all of us in too many pieces, I didn't want yeah. to the third one. Um, and I'm not sure if there's a, if folks have a suggestion on how we can um, make all of these work best so that everybody can get a good discussion and be part of yeah. the one they're most interested in. Maria, I'm glad you brought it up. It's Mary. Um, you know, the, uh, the webinar, 
that you, that you moderated and pulled together for Gin North America was one of the most uh, widely attended webinars. And it seems like um, these things that, 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 that you're interested in build off of that. Um, so for folks who participated in that webinar, um, there, there could be some, some good things in that in a session like that, Maria. Also, um, keep in mind that each of these sessions are an hour long, so there's a lot ample room to sort of go into different buckets of discussion. True. Yeah, so. We're building on that too. If you guys have a topic and it's a niche topic and you find that after 15 or 20 minutes you've covered it, you don't have to drag it on for an hour. Yeah. You can say, <laughs> let's wrap it and go check out other things. So yeah. don't yeah. be worried about something being small that maybe you want to have a conversation about. You figure out, you get to the point you want to get to, and then you you close it. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very flexible that way. And then Christy, just so people don't feel committed to one topic right now. Yeah. When the screen changes, when you get out of a room, you'll be able to see what other rooms are going ongoing at the time. So, yes. Right. You don't have to go back to the spreadsheet to like dig through it. Okay. Well, you'll be able, you'll see the rooms, you'll see the breakout room names. Yeah. And what I'm going to have all of you do is when we finish and kind of quote unquote, close out the marketplace, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask all of you to take a picture of it with your phone, because sometimes as we're navigating multiple screens, or maybe we're on one laptop, yeah. things get buried. And so it makes it really easy. Thank goodness for our phones to just take a picture of it. And then you have it easily accessible to know what's happening in what room. Perfect. Um, does anyone in chat feel like we've missed their question or ignored it before we close the marketplace discussion? If you do feel like you've submitted something we haven't seen or addressed, please unmute yourself and alert us to it. Yeah, it's Mary Nix. I just want to make sure that we've captured Caroline Wang's um, how to create a platform to engage clinicians and patients to discuss issues and facilitate alternative opinions that will inform real world evidence. Have we, have we captured that either as a part of something else or, or not at all? If I may, um, I may, I, oh, if I may go ahead, Caroline. Yeah, thanks very much. If I may just um, explain um, my questions and concerns is um, I've been quite active um, on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, and talking to my colleagues, looking at uh, videos. And what I discovered is there's a couple of challenges. Uh, one is that I find amongst physicians, um, many of them are either too busy to really do a deep dive into the um, emerging evidence from some top specialists. And when I send them videos or you know papers, they either you know, I don't think they look at them, but there's a tendency to dismiss uh, opinions that are not um, considered part of the establishment. Um, and there is really a, I see a lack of space or a platform to engage in any kind of debate and discussions or questions, um, even including, you know, uh, the quality of evidence uh, of, of a lot of the um, recommendations and and I, and I see that as, as a big problem. Uh, I mentioned yesterday ivermectin. Um, while I have attended the FLCCC, and when I send it to my colleagues, um, more often than not, it, it's just completely dismissed. And this is amongst uh, our physician colleagues. The other thing is that amongst patients and, and people who are not physicians, uh, they, have a diff they have a lot of difficulty distinguishing between what is, um, you, you know, uh, fake news or, or uh, non-factual with actually uh, high level evidence. So that's just where I'm coming from. And, and I'm hoping to use this opportunity and this conversation to um, really construct an integrated, uh, not only conversation, but um, to answer the questions from uh, Michael Dowling. Um, here's a here's an opportunity to do what we're talking about is is creating that, you know, um, a, a, a new future with structure, process, outcomes, and so I'm not sure actually which room I should be. Uh, I see there's a room four. I'm not sure if that's uh, you know appropriate for 
someone with my interest um, to really uh, advance a holistic um, model, not only for the patient, but for the system as a whole. And um, Your Honor, yeah. and Mary, I'll have you guys make a quick decision on that so we can start getting people into rooms. We're at time. So just to keep us on time. So we have Caroline, you might just want to add it as a, a separate room. And then if people are interested, they will join. And if the discussion ends early, you can move to other rooms. And if you're there yeah. on your own, it's reflection time. So that works yeah. too. Great. Thank you, guys. I'll, All right. I'll so have to add a room for you. Great. For Caroline. Um, so what I want to ask you guys to do, um, we're going to have um, Caroline's topic added in there. So in just one minute, I'm going to ask you to take a picture with your phone. So go ahead and get your phone. I'm assuming we probably all have it nearby somewhere. And I want to ask you to take a picture of the screen. Um, and that will give you a map of what conversation is happening where and at what point in time. There we go. Um, so that you can always see kind of what's happening, um, where's the conversation going on, you know, what do I want to be a part of and that sort of thing. So go ahead and take a picture of it. And then in your phone, you can zoom in and, you know, look around and so forth. All right. So do we have, Car oh yeah, Carolyn's popped up. Okay. So we're getting close with Caroline's. All right. Fantastic. So it looks like it's ready ready for photo. So go ahead and take a picture of the screen, whether it's the Zoom picture I'm showing or whether it's um, the spreadsheet you have open on your desktop. So take a picture either way. So you can either use the link that we gave you and look at the spreadsheet directly, or you can look at what's um, being shown on the screen right now. So that is your map. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to have you all um, go to a breakout room. And so I am, if you see the breakout room options, if you click on breakout rooms, there'll be names of different breakout rooms. So imagine this just like you were in a big conference room and you're looking at the titles of um, various rooms that you wanted to go into. So I want you to pick the room that you wanna go into. The only rule here is if you are the host, again, the host doesn't have to be the expert, but if you're the host, you need to go into the room that uh, that you suggested. So if your name is on there, you need to go into that room. Otherwise, you guys can go into whatever room you want. We'll help you keep time. So we'll let you know when it you know when it comes time to you know to start wrapping up your conversation and coming back in here so we can go on to the next round. So go ahead and do that. The one thing that I want to tell you guys is that I'll show you over here. Um, you will have this what we're calling harvest templates. And so this harvest template is basically just a template for you to capture notes. We'll put the link in there. So there'll be a host and the host might be the one to take notes or you might wanna ask if someone else in the room wants to take notes. So the template will just help us kind of capture the summary of the conversation, key insights and some sort of actions that might be inspired. So really simple, um, but it's an online document in the cloud. So it will save it real time. So just you'll just open up the link when you get into the room, capture the notes in it. So whether it's the host or you assign a scribe and that way we have a documentation of each of the conversations. So that way you guys can look at them afterwards. So if you have any questions, we'll be floating from room to room to help you, don't worry about it. Um, so what I, what I ask you guys now is to go ahead and pick a breakout room and head in there and we'll be following right after you to make sure that you get the, the harvest slides opened up and you're all ready to go. I just wanna remind participants that for the inspired actions to keep in mind that these can be things you can take back to your organization or your personal research or your own work, but also identify opportunities for collaboration within the community, the community including Canada, Mexico and the US. So thank you. Great reminder. Great. If you guys want to add slides, duplicate, add things to it, you absolutely can. Just please don't delete things. But feel free to add stuff that you want to. All right. So head out to your breakout rooms. We'll be cleaning up after you guys to make sure everybody's where you need to be. Um, so enjoy your next round of conversations. All right. Well, so we're, I'm going to welcome you guys back. Um, because we are, we are right on time. 
Um, so this next activity, it's, it's what's called a liberating structure. So I know you guys are lifelong learners like I am. And um, open space has been the format that we've used up to this point. And that's that kind of, un sometimes it's also called an unconference. So open space is what you've been doing so far, which is setting your own agenda, um, you know, populating it, go, being able to kind of float around, capturing notes and sharing with each other. So that open space, you can look it up um, and find all kinds of information about it. I highly recommend, you know, I think when you attend these things, one of the one of the greatest benefits is also just learning new techniques to make what you do um, better. So, you know, so take and steal and, and copy, you know, shamelessly as you're going through all of this. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is um, what's called a liberating structure. And so um, this is the activity is called what, so what, now what? And this is just a way to reflect. We've translated it into a virtual world by using, um, putting it into a spreadsheet format so that we can capture notes. So there's three parts to this, which is obvious based on the title. What, so what, now what? So basically we start with what facts and observations stand out? What things kind of came to mind as as you had these conversations. So remember, you've been probably in a, a minimum of two, but if you floated around, you might've been in more conversations from that. So this doesn't have to be you know, perfectly thought out. These are just a capture of your notes. So as you think about what are facts and observations that stood out, what, what things came up? This isn't a synthesis, it's not a judgment. It's a fact and observation capturing. So that's gonna be the first thing that we do. So what I wanna do for those of you that aren't yet, um, look in the chat box and I'll have my team kind of repost that. Thank you. Um, if you have, if you're in the market space, if you have that tab open or you have that spreadsheet open, this is a tab now in the spreadsheet. It was just hidden before we were kind of secretive. So what, so what is there? So if you're in the marketplace, you can just open up the tab or if you're not in it yet, feel free to click the link and go on to the what, so what template tab. And if you're not a big Excel user, it's at the bottom. Of, of the window. So the way that this works with a lot of people using this is it, you'll see a kind of a highlight. If somebody's in a cell, it'll be highlighted. Um, so what I want to ask you guys to do, if you haven't kind of gotten to this point, is I want you to, if your name, if your last name starts with a Z, this is just a way to kind of distribute it. If your last name starts with a Z, be kind of closer to the top. If your last name is more like an A, be closer to the bottom. So just kind of distribute yourself and click on one of the cells in column B. So if you haven't done that already, do that and that'll help us know where people are landing. So click on in column B, click on a cell. If it's already highlighted, that's already been claimed. So just pick another one. And don't highlight the whole column A, click on a cell in one of the rows. So like. Row 19, 20, 21, 24. So go to an actual cell, not the column. Yep, okay, good, somebody removed that. So pick a cell within column B. Okay, great, so your last name is closer to a Z, be closer to the top, last name closer to an A, be closer to the bottom, and you guys sort of distribute yourself along the way. So now you should have something claimed as yours that whole row will now be yours. So as I go through each of these three questions, you'll start off in this row B, capturing your thoughts and reflections. And then as I go on to the next prompt of the so what, you'll move over one row. And then finally with the now what, you'll move over to the next row. So you'll basically just take that whole column horizontally across will be yours. That's where you're capturing your reflection notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it in one segment at a time and then we'll pause and just have a quick conversation. What are you seeing? Take a look at it, take a read. What are you seeing in this section? And then we'll go on to the next section. So let's start with the what. Um, so you're in your cell, you've claimed one. So what happened? What facts and observations stood out for you? What did you hear? Um, what kinds of things come to mind as you're doing this? We're gonna take another couple minutes, Tim, if you can play some more music. Um, we'll take a couple minutes. If you're having problems um, with the tab, I'm gonna start looking back in the chat box. Please let us know and we will try to help you out. This will all be shared with you guys at the end. So you'll have it. And Marion, let me know if you're still having a difficult time.
Christy, I'm not sure what to do. I see my green, my cell is green. Yep. So start, then what? Yep, start what, typing, see if it works. Just start typing? Yeah, just start typing. It's working. <laughs> All right. Six Thank seven. you. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> and I should just move across to the cells. Yeah, first, let's just stay in this one and I'll prompt you for the others later on. So just okay. stay in that one cell that you're in and that role will be claimed as yours, but let's stay on that one cell about what right now? We'll just take a few more minutes as we're all I know some of you got, got an early start and that's great too, but not everybody did. So we just want to give everybody a little bit of time. So what things stood out for you? What did you hear about? What facts came forward? What observations did you have? What things were, were mentioned? So these aren't, um, this isn't a synthesis of what it means. This is just, you know, facts, just the facts. And we want to do this, this is called, the, if you guys might be familiar with the ladder of inference, basically what this is doing is walking us up that ladder of inference. So we're starting with the ground of, of what? That's the basis level. So we're not jumping to conclusions. We're not jumping to synthesis yet. It's just the, the basic kind of facts and figures of what we're hearing. We're not trying to figure out why that's important, um, what it means. We're just, we're just capturing right now. Um, and Janice, let me know if you still can't see the Excel file, um, if you've clicked the link, if something's not working for you. Oh, she's saying, I think she can't identify where the tab is. It's on the lower left corner of the Excel screen, Janice. Yeah, so if you're looking at the main screen right now, Tim's kind of showing you at the bottom left where it says, what, so what template? That's, that's where you would click. Yeah, I haven't found that what, so what yet. So it's within the Excel. Yep. And I'm just seeing, like, I can't minimize it. It's like huge writing. Um, you know what? Why we are, if it's if there's some glitchy thing happening, you can type what you want to in the chat and just put what with a colon and type what you want, and we'll put it in there for you. Okay. There's where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. Great. All right, so for those of you that are still working on that, totally fine, keep working on that. For those of you that are ready, um, pretty soon we're gonna jump into the other one, but we're, I'm gonna have you all start reading what's been captured first before we do the other one. So if you're done, what I want you guys to do is start reading what people actually put in there. What did they hear? And then we're gonna have just a couple minutes of discussion. What are you noticing from that? This gives you a chance to kind of peer into other people's thinking, what they were a part of, what they heard what they're thinking, what they're picking up. So on your spreadsheet, take that column B and just start skimming through it and read what other people captured. Great, Brittany or Cynthia, could one of you guys um, take Janice's and put it in a column for what? Brittany, I saw a thumbs up. Are you gonna grab that? Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, so read through if you're already done, read through, see what everyone's saying. It's a great opportunity to kind of peer into other people's conversations and what they what stood out for them. All right. So I would love as you guys are doing that. Yeah. What are you picking up on? What are you, what are you hearing or seeing? Take yourself off mute. Have a, you know, let's have a few comments about what you're noticing in this what section from these conversations we've had today. What are you, what are you reading? What are you noticing? I'm, I'm noticing gaps um, in our system and in, in how our system operates between different parties. I'm in guideline development, how the information flows uh, mm -hmm. from 
the systematic review team to um, the clinicians and the principal investigators and the patients, there's just a lack of harmony in how we're engaging and integrating information from these different audiences. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we've kind of translated our silos into a new new version of, of silos, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Other things that you guys might be noticing. What things might you have picked up from what other people said? Enrique, just to build off of what you said, like one thing I noticed was how that played out, that dynamic played out in um, the COVID response crisis or the COVID, the response to the COVID crisis and, um, and the challenges that created. Other things that people might be picking up. Thank you, Brittany. What are some what are some patterns you're noticing? Or there's definitely an identification of a need to. Uh, this is just based on COVID response. A need to share, to have forums to share information for this particular community. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, we heard about people sort of piecing things together, leveraging different kinds of tools, you know, whether it was social mm -hmm. media, trying to host big, you know, big workshops, trying to learn from each other. So yeah, how do we, what are the ways that we can connect that might be different than how we did that before? Yeah. And more dynamic. Great. Well, also there's something universal about COVID response that wasn't true previously because we're sort of engaged in condition specific work or a specialty specific work. And now we were kind of all dealing with the same condition. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we were able to capitalize on the universal universality of it effectively yeah. as a community, but specifically I'm speaking about the guideline community. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting as we, you know, what, as we kind of continue down this reflection point, some of those threads. That's why the capturing the what is really important before we get into solutions. It's, it's a great yeah. inference, inference builder. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. I think this is repeated in a couple of different ways, um, but kind of jumping off of Yorado's last point, unnecessary redundancy. So part of that might be in unnecessary redundancy that clinical organizations are kind of doing the same thing um, that the other clinical organizations are doing to implement guidelines. It could be that different guideline developers are trying to come up with all of these different um, methods to make their guidelines better, but like, why aren't we working together instead of each of them doing that? So there's a lot of unnecessary redundancy. Yeah. To do things now. And that's kind of a reflection of the silos. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Which is interesting. You know, it's opposite of the sort of the meaningful redundancies from a safety standpoint. We've got um, kind of wasted time when there's a lot to do. So I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And I think um, for those who were present yesterday, um, Dr. Ivan Flores mentioned that as part of the COVID and one of the objectives of COVID and is to reduce waste and research. Mm. So mm -hmm. very much in line with this. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say it, this wasn't what I had captured, but it did come up in um, the session that I hosted. Yeah. Um, that some of the realities of the silos that were um, evident um, during COVID um, are actually the result of, of the politi politicization of the pandemic. Um, and the fact that we did not have a coordinated national response and, and therefore there were 50 states all approaching this very differently. Mm -hmm. um, some of that created these silos um, and some of the difficulties um, in, in, in doing, um, you know, in, in the collaborations because they weren't really promoted um, in that way. Not that they didn't happen across some um, entrepreneurial, enterprising type individuals or organizations, but that as a whole, it, it was definitely a factor. Yeah. I just wanted to share that, um, that that was a, a context that, um, should need, that we need to consider. Yeah, yeah, very important. 
Definitely. Well, any last comments before I move on to the next one? All right, great. So we'll go on to the next one. And if you guys have already filled it out, you might have extra things to add now that we've had some discussion. Um, you can also take time to read it. So next is the so what. So now this is getting sort of into the present time. What's what's the so like so what about that? So what that we have silos? So what that we had redundancies? So what that we find ourselves unprepared? So what that you know that um, you know we're we're duplicating the same work? So what? And I know that sounds obvious, um, but it's it's good to think about it because. We need, as we step into this sort of inference area, don't jump from point A to point Z. So what's 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 important about that? So what? What seems important about it? Um, why why this? Why why do these patterns exist? So we're kind of peeling this back a little bit. Um, what is important about those things that we wrote either earlier or that we just heard and talked about in discussion? What things are are important? And if uh, you know, you can feel free if you want to take another you know another. Um, cell or what have you if you know if you want a new space to play but we're going to be in column d again kind of take the same same approach if your name starts last name is around a z kind of float closer to the top if you haven't already done it if you're an a kind of you know hang towards the bottom um, and just distribute yourself and click on a cell not the whole column so i think tim actually let's have you not click on the column because it's messing up the ability to see yeah there we go um, so D, so you're wearing column D, pick your cell and start kind of writing down the, so what? So what's important about this? This is us starting to build knowledge around it. What is important about that? We'll spend just a few minutes in, in doing this and then we'll go through the same process. Take some time to read it, have a little bit of dialogue and then we'll move on to the next one after that. So that's the way we'll kind of work through it. So Tim, do you want to try to play a little music if you're able? Of course you're able. <laughs> DJ Tim. And I might have you pick up the pace of the tunes for the next round. <laughs> the challenge. Got it. <laughs> Already have a song picked up. Oh, nice. So what's important about what you were thinking about, about what you were hearing about, about what you discussed? What's important about that? Great. And so Brittany, Janice has got hers in the chat box. You can grab it. Of course, you're on it.
so what are you guys what are you guys seeing what are you guys seeing in the so what so what's what's the big deal about any of this what are you guys what are you guys noticing I think it's interesting to see what other people you know kind of take from this what's important about it Tim, do you think you could zoom in a little? Yeah, probably the best place to, to look at it from a fidelity mm -hmm. standpoint is probably in the spreadsheet on your own. Right. It's always going to be grainy. Um, yeah. You know, showing it this way. Tim, you could probably zoom into like 75% or something and see see how it looks. But it's, it, yeah, on your screen is going to be the best for this. Yeah. It'll show weird. All right, this is much better. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, I think several of the blocks kind of reflect um, that the all of the things that we included in the what makes it harder for us to do what's needed, especially in times of um, emergent response like we've had with COVID. Mm -hmm. and, I think and I've seen that reflected in a few boxes. And what are some things in particular that it makes it hard to do when we say it makes it hard to do the things we need to do? Like what kinds of things are we talking about? So like one of the things, for example, we're sort of looking looking at here is that um, guidance isn't able to be developed and implemented timely. Mm -hmm. It needs to be able to synthesize the guidance and get it into practice ASAP. We're not able to do that. Yeah. Great, thank you. We spoke about this in one of the rooms where um, the emergency component of COVID really didn't allow us to use our um, six month guideline development process rooted in um, robust methodology. And we had to sort of pivot really quickly out of that. And yeah. it took a while to notice, wait, we have to pivot really quickly out of that. Yeah, so, um, that's a hard place to pivot out of. Yeah. And I think, you know, those are the sorts of things when, you know, when we get into the next section, what are things that you notice that are helped, help to overcome some of the barriers, some of the things that tripped us up, some of the things that, that, you know, the new, whether it's a, you know, a workaround, maybe it's not perfect yet, but maybe it's something to pull on. So those are, you know, as we get into the now what, these are those little takeaway nuggets. Some of them might be big, some of them might be little, but that's why we kind of walk into it in this way. Right, and I think uh, one of the charges for this day was to identify how we can do better next time. Um, yes. We are likely see... to see another one in our lifetime. Sorry, go ahead. I also see there's a global issue. So when they talk about silos, we're not only talking about silos in Canada and the United States, this is a global issue and we need to look more globally than just at our two countries. Yeah, absolutely. And diseases don't recognize borders. Yeah, exactly. Right. I need a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> diseases don't have to carry passports. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting too, you know, as we kind of go through this, are there other areas that have maybe done this in a better way? I, I, I don't know that this is true, but I remember hearing some about, you know, like veterinary medicine. They have a different way that they kind of look and track animals globally. Maybe there's something interesting in that. So I think, you know, sometimes these force us to get outside of our own peers and look at how other people might be doing something. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be the same practice, but things that we can take from other worlds, other world contexts. Right. Anything else from the so what that you guys noticed? And Tim, you stop sharing. You might that might be intentional as you're redoing it. But what other things stood out on this so what for you guys? So what's important? Anything else? Well, we heard a number of times yesterday and today about uh, missing the consumer perspective and voice. Yeah. Um, this is true for not just COVID, other other conditions, other situations as well. So why do we care about that? So what? So what we miss a consumer voice? What's important about that? Well, 
it goes to what Mr. Dowling said yesterday, we need to be obsessed with our customer and that's our customer. That's the customer for healthcare. Yeah, why Why though? So I'm just, you know, I think those are the, yeah. why, why is that important? To secure good patient outcomes, good clinical outcomes, which is our end goal, so. And I would add to that to also address need, right? So mm -hmm. patients and caregivers have specific questions that recommendations don't necessarily answer if we don't include them mm -hmm. as we're developing them, an example. Kind of more their life context, not our. Right. Our their, their needs are diverse as well, yeah. Yeah. And we keep saying they, but we're they, all us. We, yes. Forgetting. All yeah. I was saying. You know, the thing about when, when we. When we do this, I think that is important that we teach people all the time. It's, you know, we ha we do have to get outside of just talking to ourselves, even though we are also them, because we know the system. So we automatically come into it with a different level of knowledge of how to navigate, who to listen to, you know, how to filter through all the noise that's out there, but everyone else doesn't. And so even though we are them, we don't necessarily process like the rest of the people that are, you know, have a different worldview. So. I think it's interesting to think about that as stepping outside and saying, well, if I didn't know anything about this, what are people that don't know anything about this? What are they hearing? Where are they going to? What are they thinking? All right, so the final one. So now what? And I think there's a lot of things already put in now what? So I'm just gonna make this one minute. If you guys already haven't done the now what, go ahead and capture that. If you have, um, then go ahead and start reading it and we'll get right into the reflection. So now what? Now what is a great time for us to start thinking about adjustments, steps, changes, and they might be tiny little things. And maybe it's a half-baked idea that you're like, this sounds ridiculous, but there's something in here. And you know what? It's anonymous. So put things that you think are ridiculous there. Um, you know, this is just those, those nuggets that you might be taking away. Wow, I really think we could try this, or maybe we could think about that. Or, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we attempted to do this or that? They can be small little things, they can be big things, but this is this is our, our kind of action step. So that's why we're building up to this point. What adjustments, what steps, what things that are workarounds that we did, that there might be something in there. Maybe it's not the way we want a full future state forever to be, but maybe there's something in a workaround that we figured out that we can leverage on for the future to make something better. So, so now, now what? And Tim, I'll let you,
So let's start reflecting on the now what. Thank you, Tim. So let's start reflecting on that now what. So as you look there, what things are kind of interesting, exciting? What stands out for you? What nuggets pop up? If it's your own, that's cool too. <laughs> you can love your own ideas. What things are, what things do you guys want to call out? Praise your peers. What things are you reading about that you think are kind of interesting? Um, I'm seeing an emphasis on the need for implementation, that evidence is, is a very valuable tool, but it must be implemented. So we need tools and strategies to support that so we can take that knowledge and actually use it. Mm -hmm. So focus in the implementation space. Um, I see some attention to lack of, lack of diversity and um, inclusion mm -hmm. in the evidence that we have. Yeah. And as we're reading this, if you guys have ideas on how to address them, add them, you know? So if we, you know, we're saying, well, there's a lack of diversity and inclusion, are there ideas that we have about things that might help that? You know, I heard people yesterday talking about, well, you know, we often in, in many of our black communities go to, as a black person, go to look to social media for someone that, that looks like me. So that would be an idea, right? Or do we, are we actively putting out information in social media that includes a diversity of faces? You know, that would be a, a now what? I'm not saying that's the best idea. I'm just saying those are things we keep stretching ourselves, like capture those nuggets of potential ideas. I think we often hold back on ideas and we just throw out more problems because we're usually in spaces where our ideas are getting judged. This isn't that space. So if you have some ideas for those things, throw them in there. I think adding on to what um, Catherine said about implementation in a number of the rooms I observed or spoke about, heard about that um, it's not just in the implementation level, but through the full spectrum of the guideline development process to remember to engage uh, multidisciplinary teams and all stakeholders that are going to be impacted by the guideline and all the st stakeholders you're going to ask to implement your guideline. So to engage in it from the beginning of the process and not sort of just develop guidelines in silos. So it's not just a systematic review reviewer working with the content, involve and engage everyone from the beginning of the process. So there's more ownership so that they can champion it when it's developed to secure implementation. Got it. And so not just sort of the ta-da at the end. Yeah, it's not like, a, it's not a handout. It's not a handover. So everyone sort of like, develops yeah. together yeah yeah that's great if you guys have ideas of tools or approaches that help with that you know capture those too if you found some interesting ways of, of helping to make that happen other things standing out other ideas yeah christy it's mary i'm really glad you brought that up because um i i, I you know, I remember when this got going um, and the Gen North America steering group, um, I was still chair at the time. Um, and I, I, I think as a steering group, we felt like, oh, we need to be bringing our people together. This is a time we need to bring our all of our people together. Um, they're all busy trying to help um, the, the practitioner members that they serve. And we need to come together and learn what everybody's doing. Oh, the pushback was huge. No, we're too busy. We don't have time. We don't have time to come together and share what we're doing. We're too busy, uh, you know, dealing with what's happening in the trenches. And so it's a great idea. And I love, though, that you've challenged us to think about, well, what are the tools and resources that we could use that would allow us to achieve it? Um, uh, because, right, we get that it's the good thing to do, but achieving it is the hard part. Um, yeah the realities of what's happening uh, in, that, in that early phase are, are huge. Those realities are huge. And so thank you for just mentioning that because yeah. I wanted to, and, and I, I wanted to, I felt compelled, like we've got to bring our, our groups together. We got to share. This is the time where, when innovators and creators need to share, they're, they're adapting, they're pivoting, they're, they're, they're spinning. We need to spin together. Yeah. 
and learn, but it was not, uh, yeah, how do you do it? So, uh, well, I mean, I so building, that. building yeah. on that, and I'll add this in, yeah. sort of building on That's that, right. you know, you guys now have a virtual open space toolkit in your pocket. So you could imagine saying, we don't have, we don't even know what the agenda should be. Let's come together. Let's spend you three hours. We'll have two rounds. We'll populate our agenda ourselves. We'll have conversations and we'll, you know, we'll hit the points that you guys want to talk about and move on. So you now have one example of a tool that will help you do that in the moment without making it too heavy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Jen, for those of you who are individual or organizational members of Jen as well, Jen has recently launched something called Jen Connect, and you might have seen emails from them. And Jen Connect is sort of a new platform of engagement for members, and it, you can engage as an individual or as an organization, and they're just building it now. So um, I've added my personal information in there, but I honestly haven't been very active in the past month as I've been busy with this, but if you are a member and can access the Gen site, make sure to add your personal information in Gen Connect, add your organizational information. It is, its intent is to help us connect and um, help us share knowledge, ask questions. Um, so, it, and it's, I think there's gonna be a new website relaunch at the end of this month or early in April. So hopefully there will be, um, easier access to all this information and all this sharing, so. Great. But sometimes the Gen Connect emails go in our unfocused or junk mailboxes, so look for them and use the tool. It's at our disposal. It's one of the member benefits, so. That's great. Well, we're going to save this so just so that you guys know this is not going to go to waste. We're going to You'll get an email back probably from your Ardo or however the messages get pushed back um, with all the, um, the harvest capture sheets that we did today, as well as this tool. And like I said, please leverage. You guys just learned a couple new tools for your toolkit. So please leverage them, use them, you know, try them with each other, with peers. Um, it's always great to have different ways of working, particularly when we're talking about a virtual world and that's not going to completely go away so you know pandemic or no pandemic we're going to be doing more working like this and you know and often we always were but we didn't really have a lot of tools to do that um so i'm going to hand it back off to, to you guys for the final few minutes and i just thank you for letting our aspen labs team come and help facilitate you guys today it's been a total treat um and um yeah let us know if there's anything we can help you with in the future so thanks guys yeah, and one more final thing I will add is that I don't have any of the report out or the harvesting from the IOM standards and real world evidence. So if one of you from that group was able to collect it and could either just um, put it in the document or um, get it to me, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Mary, do you have something you want to say before we say final goodbye? Did you ask me? Yeah. Oh, no, I'll let you do the final goodbye. I did the welcome. Oh, you right. Peter, Peter, Peter and I can do it. Yeah, we're sure. Just so, we're so grateful for your participation and your active, active participation and engagement. Um, day one, day two, I, uh, I'm a little biased, but I think it was a great conference. Um, there's just so much content. We all have such great ideas and there's so much capacity for us to collaborate for us to share for us to learn from each other but i really i'm really grateful to for to everyone for sharing your personal stories your personal experiences with covid um and there's a lot of work to do and there's you know i have new excitement for the work i have uh, i feel refreshed i feel ready to commit to sort of changing things there's a lot of COVID has shown us that we have to change our ways. We have to revisit some of our processes. And I'm glad I have you all to work with to do that. So um, from Gen North America, thank you again. And we'll be in touch soon. Peter, you want to say something from Niam? Uh, other than that, that I'm exhausted, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th I, think, uh, I think it did gel. I think the, uh, the theme that we wanted to explore was explored and there was definitely a feeling of uh, diversity in the uh, inputs from um, 
all kinds of sources. And right. That was good. Hopefully we will meet in person next time. We have a large conference, but right. and thank you everyone for accommodating the hiccups and having this all done virtually. So thank you. Thank you, Christy and your team of facilitators for guiding us through the open space meeting today. Our pleasure. Totally right. our pleasure. This is important work. We're happy to be part of it. Right. Um, keep in touch. I'm putting my personal email address in here, but I can also be reached through the Gen website. All right. Great. Thank you, everyone. And Tim, pretty soon we'll have you cue back up some music as where everybody parts. And right. And we will send out an evaluation form for both days within the next few days after we all take catch a little breather. <laughs> so. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.